уважаемые участники. Dear participants of the discussion, dear guests, to our forum, the organizers are telling me that we need to start. The two speakers of our session are still at the entry checkpoint. So my name is Natalia Trunova, and uh, I'm uh, vice president of uh, Strategic uh, Research Center. And uh, today I will moderate uh, our panel discussion that is uh, titled Urbanization Standards uh, and uh, National Urban Policies. To begin with, uh, I would like to introduce our distinguished speakers that are with us today. That is uh, Vincent Fouchier. Chairman of the Working Group of OECD on Urban Policy Matters. Oscar Huerta Melhor, advisor on public governance and urban development of Entrepreneurship Center of OECD. Christina Ishanova, deputy CEO of the foundation of Uniform Institute uh, Development uh, in Housing that uh, we all call Dom RF, and Maxim Reshetnikov, Perm Region Governor. And we hope uh, that Alejandro Baldi, Minister of the Cities of Brazil, will join us, uh, as well as uh, Vadim Zhivulin, Deputy Minister of Economic Development of the Russian Federation. But as uh, we have only one hour allocated for our session, let us stick within the time frame of six, uh, seven minutes uh, for every contribution. And uh, Vadim Zhivulin has joined us, uh, Deputy Minister of Economic Development of the Russian Federation. So we hope that Alejandro will uh, join us uh, pretty soon as well. So let's stick to the time frame of six, seven minutes. So let us discuss the matters at hand in a concise manner. And our session of today is uh, arranged uh, under the support uh, of uh, the Organization of Economic uh, Cooperation and Development. Therefore, first of all, I would like to give the floor to Vicente Fouchier. We know that uh, OECD pays a lot of attention to urban policy and uh, to implementation of plans and uh, programs of development of different sectors by national states. And uh, we know that last year he published a brilliant report that uh, has analyzed the policies of 15 uh, policies of countries. Uh, and 15 uh, countries of OECD have uh, comprehensive urban policy, 15 uh, have uh, supported urban policy. So in your view, how does uh, the national policy presence uh, influence the dynamics and uh, rate and quality of uh, urban uh, development? And how are these processes arranged in France? Uh, and what indicators are used to assess national policies? I understand that it will be very hard to stick to six minutes, but still I will ask you to do so. Okay. Thank you very much. You said six hours. <laughs> no. <laughs> Minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I first want to uh, really thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, it's a real pleasure being with you. I also want to uh, congratulate for all the organization of this forum, which is really, really impressive, I have to, to say. And uh, also to congratulate for the World Cup, especially for me as a French. We are, I really appreciate. Well, anyway. Um, Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. No, congratulations. Um, so I, I will try to share my experience in a very, very short uh, period of time. Um, I, I'm currently the, uh, in charge of the Metropolitan Project in Marseille. Uh, I was just before uh, in charge of the master plan of Paris region. And I was before at the National Agency for Territorial Planning. So I have known uh, several uh, aspects of the question that you uh, want me to uh, to deal with today, and I'm the chair of a, uh, a very interesting group uh, at the OECD, uh, which is uh, the Urban Affairs Group at the OECD, we, uh, representing all the countries uh, working together to exchange on the, that uh, kind of topic related to cities. And that's right, in, in uh, uh, 
two or three years ago, uh, we began to uh, work on national urban policies. Uh, and I will focus on that, trying to uh, take some lessons from that uh, global uh, uh, work, but also to trying to, to see what kind of impact national policies can have in a country like uh, mine in, in, in France. So I have um, only four messages. So to stick in the few minutes. The first message is that the state, the government, uh, needs to act with subsidiarity. That means that he distributes the roles. What does the national level, what do the local authorities have to do? That's a crucial uh, point uh, to, 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 to raise. Decentralization is a key. To leave some power to local authorities, but make sure that these powers are in line with national goals. So it's a uh, delicate balance between several levels. Non, uh, non -go uh, there is no government which can control everything. Uh, there is no local authority which can do everything locally, so we have to find the right balance between the, the, uh, all the, the scales. And for instance, in many countries, in France, but also in many countries uh, around the world, there is the emergence of metropolitan areas, metropolitan um, public bodies. Uh, and a few years ago in, in Mexico, uh, we had the mayor and minister uh, meeting from the OECD. The title of this was the Metropolitan Century. There is a real emergence, and national policies, hello, Minister, um, uh, national policies around, around the world are now recognizing this new level of uh, governance to help better uh, policies, urban policies, uh, in large uh, metropolitan areas. And in France, for Greater Paris, but also for Greater Marseille, uh, the state has impulsed new scales of governance to make sure that urban policies will be dealt at the right scale. So I, that's my first um, message. The second message is that governments need to have a very clear view uh, on uh, the national urban policies and content. What are, are the priorities? Where do we have to focus our money, our decision making? And in France, we have s a long history of national urban policy. But uh, in, in the 60s, the policy was not the same as today. Uh, in the 60s, we were planning uh, urban expansions, new towns, but now it's completely the reverse. We want to stop urban sprawl, and we try to have a very intense um, um, limitation of sprawl and uh, a maximization of uh, renewing urban fabric. So that's a complete change in the way the national laws uh, are uh, um, giving the, the, the cap uh, for local authorities. Um, we also have, uh, thanks to the OECD, uh, a clear view now that metropolitan areas are the key. Uh, we can compare all the metropolitan uh, uh, cities in, in the world and we see that when they have a right governance at the right scale, which is the uh, functioning area, uh, we can measure that there is 1.2 uh, more uh, GDP growth compared with metropolitan areas without the governance at the right scale. Governance meaning planning, transport, and economy uh, development. So we have to uh, take that into account, and we see that many, many uh, countries have now this uh, will to uh, increase the capacity of metropolitan projects to be at the right scale with combined uh, policies. And the national is helping the local. Um, we also have um, uh, the legitimacy of the national level when it crosses several institutions. When we are on the very uh, large scales, for instance, large corridors, uh, the, the Seine axis, the, 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 the link between Paris, for instance, and the sea uh, is a crucial uh, uh, corridor for uh, the country, and the state wants to help for that. And there is no local authority able to do so. So we have to coordinate the development, and this, the national state tries to impulse uh, this very uh, important, not only infrastructure, but also uh, uh, economic coordination between stakeholders, public and private stakeholders. My third um, main message is that the governments have to coordinate all the ministries in order to have a very coherent um, urban policy. And we see many uh, organizations within governments around the world. Uh, sometimes we have a specific uh, ministry dedicated to urban affairs, but sometimes 
We don't. In France, we have. But uh, maybe we have too many, <laughs> actually, uh, ministries in charge of urban affairs. Uh, so we need to coordinate. Coordinate uh, economic min the minister in charge of economy, minister of transport, minister of finance, minister of uh, interior. All that uh, has to be combined to have a very, very efficient um, uh, policy on urban affairs. It's not a single uh, or sectorial uh, um, domain. So it's very difficult. It's a challenge. And in, uh, in France, we have several ways to do so. We have the Prime Minister, who has a cabinet for uh, special uh, territorial affairs. So that's, as you see, uh, we, we many uh, arrangements are uh, possible. And my fourth and last message is that um, urban policy is a permanent dialogue. We need to make sure that public, private, and all level of public decision makers work together. So we need to um, uh, invite all the stakeholders at the table, and there are many ways to do so. Coordination, co um, um, uh, some kind of uh, associations, and, um, but anyway, the policies have to be um, uh, elaborated with all the stakeholders at the table. It's long, it's complicated, but it's worthwhile. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fouchier. And now I would like to give the floor to your colleague, uh, Mr. Melhor. So could you tell us how Urban Policy Review can help us uh, to elaborate urban policy in Russia and uh, how similar researches uh, influenced the situation in other countries. And uh, yesterday it was shown uh, that uh, this kind of uh, study has been uh, has covered uh, many countries. So apart from the report, what is the practical deliverable and result of this kind of study? Yeah, uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Yes, um, I think I'm going to uh, repeat a little bit of what uh, Van San has just mentioned. But uh, yes, at OECD we have, um, uh, within the Working Party of Urban Policy, where Van San is the chair, um, we have an, an instrument that is called the Urban Policy Reviews. Uh, this instrument is a, is, um, is a bit of a tool to make a diagnosis of urban policies uh, in, uh, in, in, in countries, and at least in OECD member countries, although we have used it in uh, some non-OECD member countries. So far, we have used this uh, methodology to assess urban policies in countries like China, Mexico, Chile, uh, recently Kazakhstan and Vietnam, and, and some others like Poland, Korea. Um, and this policy basically, uh, this, this uh, reviews is basically a way to um, assess urban policies, both view and, ba and from the experience of other countries. So basically it's an instrument for lesson sharing and to provide some policy recommendations, but based on the experience of other countries. So it's not just that uh, we draft a report and we think, oh, uh, this country should do this, but perhaps we do that, but based on the experience of other countries. So that's one of the, the, the important things about this. So. Uh, this, um, these reviews uh, that we have uh, at OECD basically cover five um, blocks, if, you, if, you find, if I can put it like that. Um, one of those is, uh, uh, of these blocks is, uh, has to do with, uh, with money. Uh, one of the th first things that we have to do when we talk about this is how to assess the impact of the framework of municipal finance. Because without uh, financial resources, cities cannot do more, uh, cannot do a lot. So we uh, tend to start by analyzing, for example, uh, the um, revenues of the municipalities, the transfers, the expenditures, debt, etc. So to what extent uh, municipalities have the capacity, for example, to uh, and the incentive to manage the resources in a, uh, or, and, or spend efficiently. So that's one of the things that we analyze. This is one of the blocks, uh, municipal finance. The second is uh, that we call uh, is uh, about space. Uh, this is a way, um, what we do in this part is analyzing, for example, the coordination of policies. So for example, land use, transport, environment. Uh, because this is very important in, because uh, the, the, the way the cities develop is the way 
they're going to start attracting uh, people or, or even investments. Um, uh, for example, the way uh, cities develop as well, especially uh, how people move and goods move across across urban areas, determines, for example, the efficiency of the economy. So this is also very important. There is another block that is called, uh, what we call connections, because cities do not live in isolation. So what, uh, con what we see is to what extent some countries have created a system of cities. It doesn't matter if they are big or small. So they, the idea is to see how they can create synergies and how they are connecting to one another to create a system of cities. Uh, this is very important. And um, the other uh, block that we have is what we call people. And this is important because um, most of the policies that uh, governments implement have an implication or are the aim is to improve the well-being of people. And it's not, uh, uh, obviously, uh, they have some uh, implications for cities, for example, the immigration policies, because they sometimes impose certain uh, weight over local governments. I mean, uh, the national governments pass on certain policies and they have implications for the capacity of, uh, of, uh, of local authorities. So what we see is to what extent national governments are sensitive to, the, uh, uh, to local implications of their national policies in this case. Um, finally, we have another component which is, called, which is the uh, institutions. Uh, in this uh, block, what we analyze in the reviews is uh, to what extent the structures and processes that are in place are uh, fomenting uh, policy coherence and coordination across ministries and across different levels of government. Uh, more or less, this is the structure and the methodology that we have in the reviews. And that uh, some, in, depending on the country, we give a special emphasis. In some countries, they have particular emphasis on housing policy, so we tend to put more emphasis on that. In some others, they place, uh, they have more, um, they give more priority, for example, to the urban governance, so we give a little bit more emphasis to that. But uh, more or less, this is the structure that we follow with our reviews. Now, what is what uh, a country get? Well, the country get is basically a set of recommendations. Uh, based on the international experience, and they have had some, uh, some impact. Uh, for example, in, uh, in Poland, uh, when we finished the review, uh, the government uh, used the review to, pro to build the national urban policy framework, basically taking the recommendations of the OECD on board, uh, because they found it, uh, let's say, useful. So uh, that's, that's what they did. In Mexico, when we finished the review, um, basically the, the, what Mexico had was is a, is a housing crisis. They started building houses everywhere. But the, build, the message from Mexico was, well, building houses is fine, but they should focus more on building cities, not just houses, because uh, they were not connected to, um, to, the, to the rest of the metropolis, etc. So they have, a, they have a big problem with that. Uh, so what they did is to, after the review, is to change the approach to a, for, to a more compact development of cities. I mean, the, there, the, there's a massive problem of, uh, of houses now that some of them are abandoned because they are located in areas that uh, they shouldn't be. Uh, but uh, now, the, after the review, uh, with the recommendations, they are taking a more a compact approach to that. And just to finish, in Kazakhstan, when we finished the review, uh, the government developed a, a roadmap for the implementation of this review and established certain, certain activities or responsibilities to every government and to every uh, ministry at the national government for the implementation of that. And that is um, a, a way for the government to move forward with its uh, urban policy uh, agenda. And uh, I think that's uh, something that uh, is uh, helping them a lot. So that's it. Thank you. I see Bob that. Thank you very much uh, for your answer. And my next question will be to Mr. Baldi. In the Russian Federation so far, we do not uh, have a uniform uh, 
agency that would coordinate city policy. We have Ministry of Economic Development, uh, Ministry of Housing and Construction, and other ministries that are responsible for various uh, activities that have an impact on uh, cities and urban development. We have a committee also on urban development, but uh, there are no particular cities matters uh, there. And uh, Mr. Fouchier has said that France, Australia, and Brazil have uh, these uh, kind of uh, agencies, and Brazil has ministry of, ministry of cities whose uh, prime goal is uh, development not of housing, but cities. Can you tell us what the functions of the ministry is and how you coordinate with other federal agencies, with the cities? What is your toolkit of the development and support of city development? Thank you. Hello, good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. And the Ministry of Cities was created in 2003 in Brazil. In that time, they tried to coordinate all the policies for the city's urbanization to, to bring all the attributes of the federal government. When we are discussing about the cities to the same place, to the same federal uh, ministry, that's a huge challenge to coordinate all the attributes as well, because that is uh, that is every attribute from the Ministry of Cities in Brazil. It is a huge attribute to take care about houses, as Mr. Melchor was telling us about Mexico experience. It's a country with 26 states and one federal a district with 5,570 cities. So, and all the policies, most of them are created and are the, the obligation of the cities. And that's why we're trying to implement a, a, pol a national policy, which one we can organize and we can uh, bring the urbanization, the, the development of urbanization to to the similar way of all of cities, but it's a huge country, as I tell us. Then there's a lot of difference between from the north to south of the country. And it's very different to build houses in north of the country where we don't have any, any kind of land with the policies and with the land property with the people like Horaima. So that's why we're trying to improve every year the Ministry of Cities to understand every state challenge to develop the right policy for every city, for every micro region, which one we have almost 400 micro regions of the country, and try to bring the cities, that's what we are doing right now, to exchange completely the regulation for sanitation. And the Ministry of Cities will have four principal attributes. The sanitation, which one is a huge challenge for Brazil because we have a lot of difference between the cities and the regions. In the state of Amapá, in the capital of the state, we have three percentage of the sanitation collections and treatment. So in the state of Sao Paulo, we have more than 87%. So this is one of our targets when we're talking about the sanitation. So for the mobility, we have like a megalopoly like Sao Paulo with a lot of challenges in Rio de Janeiro with two, 22 million people in Sao Paulo and 12.6 million people in Rio de Janeiro. It's completely different than Manaus when you're talking about the people which one can come and go by from your house to your work by boat and something like that. So it's a huge country and the uh, Ministry of Cities in Brazil is becoming more important and the regulation we are trying to bring from the cities to discuss about naturally with the Congress and with the cities. But the constitution of Brazil majority uh, established in the municipalities is the, the right, that is the, they, are the, they have the rights to discuss and to implement the policies for all the urbanization policies in the country. That's why it's not uh, easy to 
to implement the right policies. That's when Mr. Melchior was talking that uh, talking about the houses. We built a lot of houses in the country, more than 5.2 million in my life, my, my house program. So in almost nine years, but most of them, it was built in the place what, where we didn't understand why, because it's uh, far away from the urban centers. So when we increase the cost of the transportation, we increase the investments of the public investments for mobility, for sanitation, for all the, the logistics costs, what we have to increase, and, and as well the, the, the jobs for the people which one lives around the cities, like the, in the major of these areas. So the attributes of the Ministry of Cities for the sanitation, the mobility, the houses, and the traffic, it's uh, all the urbanization program for the country, so it's a huge challenge, it's a huge attributes in a continental country. So, but we are trying to improve our policies, trying to bring the, the, the discussion for the, for, the, for the ministry and to, to help all the municipalities, the mayors and the cities, to increase their policies, to help them to invest, because most of the funding is from the federal government in Brazil. So that's why we are trying to push them to understand how is important the, the urbanization policies for the cities growing. Since from we have 44% of the people in the, in the cities in 1960s, and right now we have more than 86% in the cities. So we increased a lot of the cities, and we didn't like with the plan, with management. So this is our attributes in Brazil, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. The next question I'd like to ask to Maxim Reshetnikov. The forum, we have a project, uh, PM300. At the third floor, you can get acquainted with that. I'm aware that you personally participated in the development of this project, discussion of this project. Taking into account your experience in Moscow, Maxim, even in a city of a million population, can you replicate the positive experience of Moscow for the center of Perm city in six years to become a practically similar to the center of Moscow? Getting back a very important issue raised by Mr. Fouchier. So how the system of authority, scope of authority should be built, because in the territory of Perm 300, there is a huge block of different interests, stakeholders, owners, and not even a governor can influence directly these interests. Now we see the federal or national policy from the region. How do you see that for this project to be implemented, not within 20 or 25 years, but six or seven years? So thank you very much. I'm not sure that six, seven minutes is enough to answer the general questions of our existence. I would like to talk about the city construction policy and through that try to answer your questions. First of all, I totally agree with Mr. Baldi saying that in the core, in the backbone of a new uh, urban policy, a new standard urban policy which is in place, we need to rethink the policy which has been implemented recently. As a rule, the approach was the following. We didn't quite successfully uh, provide the centers of the cities. We didn't know how to tackle them. We didn't have enough tools. We have an agricultural land. Let's build new house. That was not very successful. So as a result, we got so-called sprawling of the cities, expanding the cities under the stagnating number of population and sometimes even reducing number of population. Now we understand that the cost on infrastructure, infrastructure, the cost on utilities and so on and so forth increased. So we need to start uh, this urban policy back to the center. 
to the more densification of the cities. So the heart of our cities should be different, absolutely different. And it seems to me that this is the main message of mine. In Perm, we have offered a project like that, Perm 300 project. I wouldn't say that everything is quite clear, but at least there is a concept, there is a thing to work with. We are going to move forward. There are some issues uh, which has been implemented already, but it is not on the set of uh, what we are going to do. It is very important what we are not going to do, because this project is connected with the review of the city urban policy in the Perm agglomeration to decrease housing in the suburban areas. Sometimes there are some local centers uh, shaped. We need to develop them as well. This is the first message. The second point it is clear that this new city development policy should be implemented under different economic circumstances. The market of housing, the market of real estate is in the phase of stagnation. And we do understand that uh, at the moderate rate, of growth, the rate used to be very high before 2014, 2015. We understand that the requirement for the feasibility of the project is quite different. Everything is happening under the circumstances when the demands of people have changed. It's evident that what was built 10 years ago, 20 years ago, doesn't seem to be more than now there are new requirements relating to the social infrastructure, kindergarten, schools. It always was in place. Now we have new transport requirements. There is a city environment. Now the sports facilities, recreation facilities, so on and so forth. We have to, right now within our policy, aim at the standard, which is not comprehensible to everyone, but which is going to be very comfortable for tomorrow. And I'd like to underline that we have very strict economic circumstances. So the investment volume connected with the development is to increase the investment in this public infrastructure, amenities and utilities. And the state cannot do by its own. We need to call sharing mechanism to share this investment with investors because now these mechanisms are quite weak. The next question I'd like to lay emphasis on is the question connected with urbanization. We shouldn't pay too much attention to global projects. Of course, it's easy to talk about PERM 300, uh, the modernization of the industrial zone, but let's take a look what we are witnessing in Moscow. These are not the projects of creating and developing something new, but the main effect is not that the uh, advertising has been done with uh, the, the uh, landscaping has been provided. So along with the realization of these projects, we need to focus on the implementation of sport adjustment, what people really need at shorthand. So it's great that we have the federal project connected with the landscaping and the city development projects because they put back the focus on these issues. Talking about the question whether every Russian big city over a million can look like Moscow, I think it is not possible because the economic conditions are different. But it doesn't necessarily mean that our centers cannot be very cozy, cannot be very comfortable. Yes, we do understand that probably one, two, or three zones, parks, squares, places should be aligned with the Moscow standards, but all different things need to have good pavement, need to have barrier-free environment and good uh, waterway system. So for people, for moms and their children to walk. So that's what we need to do. And that needs to be done not only city over a million but citizens, but even in the smaller cities. And we see that, in principle, this is this can be implemented. It requires a particular approach, a different approach starting with cooperation with the citizens, uh, budget planning, cooperation with the subcontractors, so on and so forth, because to provide a good road, free barrier environment is not less difficult task rather than to implement a huge uh, urban development project. Uh, Davy is in details. We don't like to work with details, but we need to do that. And a little point in the conclusion, what requires what uh, scope authorities, segregation of authorities should be in place. It seems to me that in our reality we should be honest uh, with our region size. Our, some of our regions are uh, just average uh, municipalities in Europe. 
and local small municipalities in China. And we have the region level where three levels of when we have the regional development, we have district and the uh, municipality itself. It's a village in China, actually. We should bear this in mind. The factor of uh, unity of uh, municipality factors is very crucial for the development both of regions and municipalities. It's great that uh, over the last years the management uh, level in municipalities has increased and it is important to facilitate and fine-tune this. Of course, we have some ideas what to do and the key issue, it has been mentioned already, that it cannot exist without money. So the financing issue is a crucial one. We need to give the uh, clear financing foundation for the municipality development. But in order to guarantee for the municipalities, we need for someone to guarantee to the regions. Yesterday, we had a commission on the regional policy. In June and July, I thought that I defined my budget. We're discussing the details, the priorities to work with the deputies to uh, approve of the object, but I was absolutely wrong. The input was absolutely different. Uh, we just gave up old input, but we were not given the new input. So but it is for 2019. All the programs we are planning for five years period, you've said that six years period. Yes, you can achieve some results, tangible results, but talking about the, the huge projects like Perms 300. These are huge projects, very complicated projects. You need to anticipate 10 years period. So the program of road development, road construction, we have approved of the five years period and we're looking at the second five years period, but we need to have some input finance information. There is a huge turbulence of the budget relations, of the tax relations, which has been in place over the last years. It's always has always been like that, but you feel quite turbulence right now. We do need some stability. This is a key message. Everything is in our hand. So thanks to God, the uh, issue of urbanization and city development is on the agenda. We are discussing the issues right now, which 10 years ago were not on the agenda at all. The ad advertising new rolling stock uh, purchases, new public transportation. It uh, is being discussed not in different levels, but it is being discussed as a, a system policy. So taking the opportunity that Moscow Urban Forum, I would like to thank to our colleagues from Moscow for them to create such a standard and for their very active sharing this standard as all the outlines of Moscow and the workouts of Moscow are quite in open public access. Maybe something should be changed. So the set of recipes is in place, everything is our hand. Thank you very much for your presentation. The next question to Kristina Eshkhanova. Christina. It is a very difficult task in front of the Development Institute, uh, DOMAREF, as you have the task to increase housing building along with the development and improvement of the city environment, creating a very comfortable city environment. Uh, there are no uh, boat governors like Maxim Reshetnikov who is going to say that we're not going to build something in the field somewhere in the middle of nowhere. We are going to provide the density. We know that the rates of building, when we try to get it back to the city, so they go down by 1.5 two times. There are different conditions and you need to reshape the projects themselves of infrastructure and everything. We see that and Moscow, re this renovation project. From your perspective, how are we going to change this policy? What plans does Domorev have on this matter? From your perspective, where are going to be the main growth points and in uh, housing as well? Thank you very much. Good morning to your colleagues. Everything is boiling down to the cities being the center of the global economy. So these cities account for 80% of the global GDP and the UN Habitat uh, review that by 2050, the going to be about 70% of the whole population live in the urban areas. Together with the Institute of the City Economic Development analyzed 17 huge metropolitan areas of Russia. These are metropolitan areas, over 1 million population. 
and these 17 biggest metropolitan areas account for 38 percent of GDP of Russia and about 33 percent of the whole population live in these metropolitan areas. Along with that we see the opportunity to give more impetus to the uh, our national economy compared with the global indicators but we see that to, since 2010 to 2016 within these seven years the population has increased by three point something million of people uh, as the population on the other part of the territory reduced by two million so the threat is in place so the people go to the cities so more than 50 percent of uh, blocks of flat are being built in cities and this trend is going to continue so the housing will be in need in those areas so this in this uh, situation Domorev uh, started to work the complex development of the territories this is the strategic document the objective of which is to shape the comprehensive and holistic approach to develop the city environment the document is going to be uh, effectively land usage which is to be effectively used within the cities it will be a guidelines to housing construction and housing projects for new territories in the city and development of the territories that have certain construction sites on them. And uh, we are following all the activities of OECD and we are trying to have our guidelines uh, in line with the OECD recommendations and uh, so our guidelines uh, would recommend uh, uh, compact uh, city models, effective uh, land use, and uh, effective distribution of uh, transport infrastructure, engineering infrastructure, and so on, just like uh, OECD does. And uh, we also lay emphasis on uh, mixed use uh, and uh, shape the environment uh, for economic uh, and other changes. And we are also interested, uh, and together with the Ministry of Economy and uh, OECD, we are discussing an opportunity to hold a joint project uh, on national policy review. It is extremely critical for us as a country to understand it all, because uh, sound national policy naturally helps uh, long-term development of the country. I would also like to share with you some ideas about the tools that we have at hand uh, for our city's uh, assessment. Together with the Strelka Design Bureau, we have elaborated uh, City Quality Index, and uh, we have following we have been following Better Life Index uh, of OECD for many years, and in our index, uh, we tried uh, to follow similar indicators as uh, the OECD does. We have uh, faced certain challenges of complying with this index fully because of the difficulties of statistics data gathering that we have today. And we have looked at how the OECD gathers their statistics around the cities. And now a lot of matters like environment and safety is aggregated at the level of the region. And it gives a vague understanding on the real life in the cities. For example, in as for environment, around 120 cities in Russia have registered fixed stations on environmental data gathering. So 80% of the cities do not have any statistical data gathering at all. And we are ready to improve this. And we have taken first measurements of 212 cities. And some cities got less than half of the points and the presidential decree said that this index should go up by 30 percent and that is what we are striving to and we're trying to move ahead thank you very much christina we have five minutes left but uh, as we started later i believe we will give us 
give, give our distinguished uh, speaker six uh, minutes. Uh, so a question to Vadim Zhivulin, Deputy Minister of Economic Development. Alejandro Baldi said uh, that in 2003, Ministry of Cities in Brazil was uh, founded and the main and the key subject of the ministry is urbanization, as we have heard, and uh, that is admitting that a new and innovative economy has people as uh, its prime source of development, and uh, where these uh, creative and innovation-focused people move, there will be points of growth. Ministry has a whole range of mechanisms and vehicles to support development of separate territories, not only the cities. Vadim, do you think there should be some rethinking of economic policy if we take these tools and vehicles uh, through the siege of uh, urbanization? And should there be a specially dedicated agency in the Russian Federation that will be responsible for that only? Good morning, everyone. You have asked me so many important and interesting questions, and I have only six minutes to answer. First of all, I would like uh, to tell you that now we are completing a spatial uh, development uh, project uh, or document uh, that has a lot of myths uh, and uh, suspicions uh, around. I will not focus on the strategy itself now, but I will tell you something about the trends that we have seen when working on this document. When we started our work on the strategy, which is a document that has to determine the spatial development of the whole country in social sphere, urban policy, migration processes, we started with analyzing migration flows to see how the country is developing in terms of uh, the population concentration transfer and what we have seen is that the major locations where the population is concentrated is connected with the cities to this or that extent so we have labor migration natural migration that today is connected to the influx to the cities and less populated uh, municipal entities, uh, unfortunately, today are facing the outflow of population. Continuing our work on the strategy and understanding uh, what kind of territories we need to develop, first of all, we decided to have a look at how this trend of urban concentration is connected to global trends. And what we have seen is that this urbanization trend, like many speakers have mentioned, is global. And to this extent, we as a country somewhat lagging behind. And that is what is going to grow in the near future. And uh, the population influx to cities uh, will continue. We tried to look at where and how economic growth uh, is concentrated today in terms of the input uh, into uh, gross uh, domestic product. And if we extract uh, mineral resource centers and uh, large uh, industrial and agricultural centers, we have uh, cities and uh, large city metropolis that show the largest dynamics. The question is how we should further on elaborate a national strategic policy connected with spatial development and what we need to support first of all. And today we tried to speak about several kinds of territories in our document. We understand that cities are the main driver of future economic growth. And uh, with that in mind, uh, we pose new requirements to the cities. And actually, it is the citizens that pose these requirements, because they have uh, a comfortable environment, uh, hot uh, water supply, the internet connection. So that is a totally new look of uh, citizens. And uh, the demand to new city lifestyle is uh, growing.
analyzing dynamics of urban processes and population on, we have seen and forecast the outflow of population from villages and rural areas and inflow to the cities. And like Maxim Reshetnikov has said today, we need to focus our policy in a dense and compact way to improve uh, the quality of infrastructure and the quality of lifestyle uh, in cities. Working on our document further on, we decided to understand who is responsible for cities uh, as a whole and how urban policy is implemented uh, in uh, federal authorities. And uh, we have seen uh, that uh, urban development uh, topic is present in practically all federal ministries, but none of them uh, is responsible for a comprehensive picture, and there is no sole or uniform authority that is in charge of that. And that is why today we start uh, working on a program that would unite uh, a lot of tasks uh, and authorities connected with the uh, city's development uh, that would be a large uh, program, uh, large document that might not be a national project, but we would like uh, to consolidate the effort of our colleagues from federal authorities and uh, developmental and research institutes uh, to cast a new look at uh, urban development uh, to help cities develop as a comprehensive ecosystem. For that, today we have a certain foundation, and we started with a program of mono cities support. We managed a lot uh, there, and uh, today we have a concept of uh, historic centers uh, development together with Dom RF and colleagues uh, put forward some typical solutions uh, for historical and cultural centers of different cities. And uh, there are some uh, mechanisms uh, that we embed uh, into spatial development strategy. And uh, as a result, we would like to have a coordinated and comprehensive document that would uh, incorporate events of the majority of uh, ministries and agencies uh, together with the regions and governors and uh, large municipalities. And uh, we would like uh, this uh, document to be driving force uh, for our city's uh, development in the future. Thank Thank you very much, Vadim. Dear colleagues, we have really a couple of minutes left, and we can take one question from the audience. But please introduce yourself and say whom you ask your question. Regrettably, the interpretation without the microphone is impossible. Vadim, the question was right. We have uh, city districts, uh, municipal regions, uh, rural settlements, uh, but such a category as a city is not registered anywhere. So the task is not simply to word and define uh, this uh, notion in some uh, law. We need to treat the city as some new entity that we have not known before, because uh, what uh, we use is authority of different levels uh, of uh, power, but we have not uh, dealt with the city as a separate ecosystem. And Moscow is a brilliant example of how an approach to the city space uh, can uh, bear the fruit. So federal law 131 will have to be amended anyway, and criteria will have to be set so that cities that are not so strong would stop adding rural territories. Well, I would not like to make some statements here, but what is important is that this approach to arranging city space and city environment needs a tuning of interaction of mayors, governors, and uh, the notion of uh, metropoly and agglomeration itself. It is not a theory. It has to become a new governing mechanism of interaction between municipalities, cities, capital, 
which is an administrative center of a region, and so on and so forth. So an issue with new understanding of city, city metropoly or agglomeration and its reflection in legislature is present. Thank you very much. And dear colleagues, we really have to be finishing, to be wrapping up, uh, because uh, there is a next session. And, uh, the city of Brasilia lives uh, very well, and I believe that uh, Alejandro would be able to answer this question uh, afterwards, because there was a question, the guy asked a question. So the guy asked a question, uh, how does uh, the city of Brasilia feel? Or at the Brazilian cities? Sorry, because I couldn't hear his ah. question. That's why ah. I couldn't understand. So the city of Brasilia is a federal district. Ah. So that, there is no mayor, that is on the governor. And that it was a planned city, which one has increased a lot. Now it's that has a population of 4 million and 200,000 people. And it grew a lot. But we increased the policies for urbanization and to make it more organized. So the city is one of the most beautiful cities what we have in Brazil, especially when we discuss about the urban policies in the very clear and very definite when you know where you can build this and that, especially about the house programs for the, the population. Mm -hmm. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so that is, now we stop, finish our session.